When setting up FDTD simulations, a common question is how long to run them in physical time. A simple answer to this question would be as long as necessary for all the electromagnetic fields within the simulation domain to decay to negligible values. This condition usually ensures that the results obtained from frequency domain monitors are reliable as they can accurately represent the continuous wave response of the system when the fields recorded at the beginning and end of the time stepping are zero or very close to zero. When dealing with light propagation in a non-resonant device, such as this straight waveguide, a good initial guess would be the largest domain dimension multiplied by the mode group index divided by the speed of light in a vacuum plus the source time. This ensures that the pulse has enough time to travel throughout the largest simulation domain dimension and then decay to a negligible value. The group index of the fundamental transverse electric guided mode in this 500 nanometer wide and 220 nanometer thick silicon waveguide in the air is 4.37. To reproduce this tutorial, create a similar waveguide with a length of 30 microns, set up a mode source to inject the transverse electric mode, and adjust its bandwidth between 1.5 and 1.6 microns. You can refer to other tutorials to accomplish this task. Then click the plot button to visualize the source time dependence where you will see that the source signal takes about 0.25 picoseconds to decay. This results in a runtime of approximately 0.7 picoseconds. Now let's analyze the effects of the runtime parameter on the FDTD results. In addition to the mode monitor, add a field time monitor at the center of the simulation domain with dimensions of 30 microns in the x direction and 1 micron in the y direction. Be cautious when setting up this monitor, as it can accumulate a large amount of data. Leave only the EY component selected under the fields, then adjust the interval parameter to 100, and increase the interval space to 2 in the X and Y directions to downsample the data in time and space. First, turn off the early termination detection feature for illustration purposes only by setting the shutoff condition to 0. Then adjust the runtime to 0.7 picoseconds as calculated previously. Before running the simulation, click on Estimate Flex Credits to view the estimated cost and size of the simulation. Then run the simulation and go to the post run results. You'll observe that the mode monitor amplitude deviates from 1 only by 10 to the power of minus 4, which is mostly a numerical artifact with no impact on result analysis. Select the field time monitor and cycle the time parameter between 0 and 0 0.7 picoseconds to view snapshots of the Gaussian pulse along the waveguide. You'll see that the pulse was completely absorbed by the PML before the end of the simulation as it should have been. Now click Edit to create a new version and adjust the run time parameter to 0 0.6 picoseconds to observe what happens when the pulse does not have enough time to propagate. Run the simulation and go to the post-run results as before. The mode amplitude now deviates from 1 by almost 10 to the power of minus 1, which can potentially lead to false conclusions. Observing the data in the field time monitor, you'll clearly see that the pulse has not entirely left the simulation domain at the end of the simulation, a condition to be avoided. Lastly, create a new version and restore the shutoff condition to 10 to the power of minus 5, which is usually sufficient for most simulations. Now you can increase the runtime slightly, for example, to 1 picosecond, and then run the simulation again. This time, the fields in the simulation domain decay to below 10 to the power of minus 5 before 1 picosecond, triggering the shutoff condition, and thus stopping the simulation. The results show that the mode amplitude is similar to the first case, and the fields have vanished at the end of the simulation. This last strategy is preferred to avoid running simulations longer than necessary, and it should be used whenever possible. However, in some cases, such as when high quality factor resonances are present, waiting for the fields to decay to a negligible value can be impractical. It would be best if you took special care to manage the simulation runtime in such cases. For more information, refer to Lecture 3 of FDTD 101.